Hello everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this tutorial, we're gonna show you how to make this two-tiered wedding cake that featured some edible gold leaf and some edible lace. This was from a few weeks ago and a beautiful fall wedding. And I hope you enjoy it and we'll get right to it. So first we're going to get our tiers ready. And I attach my tiers to my baseboard with some rolled up tape. That's how I get it to stick. You can use buttercream or ganache if you prefer. I just like to use the tape because it holds it in place and it doesn't scooch around and I can get right to the frosting of the cake without having to worry about that setting up first. And I'm just using my American buttercream that I will link a um, link to it in the description and I'll try to add a card in here so you can go directly to the recipe and the technique if you want to do that also. And we're just gonna apply a good coating. This cake had already been filled and crumb coated and set in the refrigerator to chill. It had been in the refrigerator for probably about 30 minutes. Or you can place it in the freezer if you're pressed for time for about 20 or 15 minutes or so. And then I, to get this raised edge, this scalloped edge, the unfinished edge, I'm not sure what to call it. <laughs> you just go ahead and make sure that you remove a large portion of the extra buttercream. But when you do your last go, last go on the top, um, and then you go back to the sides, you're not gonna have such um, a big heavy edge on it. You could do it with just doing it you know, once around and not removing the excess, but I prefer to not have such a heavy, especially for a wedding, a delicate wedding cake, not such a heavy amount of buttercream sticking off the top. So that's kind of my secret to that. Remove some extra like you see me doing right there, but then make sure that you still are gonna need to go around the cake to smooth it just a little bit more, and that gives you just that extra little bit of buttercream to make it a pretty, not bulky edge. And pop those both, both in your refrigerator or freezer until it is firm to the touch. Now this bottom tier had kind of bowed out a little bit on that edge. So what I'm doing there is I'm just using a paper towel. Since it has crusted over, you have a few minutes here. You can add, um, use your paper towel to push it back into place. And then I did go ahead and just sprayed it down with a little water and um, smooth it down just one final time. Now this is my trick on figuring out placement for your supports. I like to use a star cutter and find the center or as close to it as you can get, press it down, and then you have a mark where you're gonna put five straws. Now the amount of straws that you're gonna use depends on the size of your cakes. For a six inch going on top of an eight inch, I typically will stick with just the five straws and then I cut it down to size and then I cut the other ones the same size. I don't show you how I'm doing that, but um, just basically line them up together and cut them the same size. And then I'm gonna lift them up and add a little buttercream to get the top tier to stick to the bottom tier and the weight of this cake. This has been chilled. It has been frozen for a good 15, 20 minutes. That's why I can lift it up. The weight from that cake with a little coaxing of my hands will push those straws back down. That's kind of a good way to be able to get your cake stacked without the fear of messing up your finish of your buttercream. And then I just filled in, I call this caulking, with a little bit of the same buttercream and then smooth it down with my scraper. Now this is the edible lace. I did not make this, this was for an actual wedding. I'm using piping gel to stick it to the cake. Um, and I leave it on the wax paper while I'm applying the piper, piping gel just so I don't get it all over my table. But the reason we used the pre-made kind was because it was for a wedding and this was the lace they wanted. You can purchase those online. You do not have to make your own edible lace. I just like to have the option personally um, to have the lace be a little bit more not, how do I put it, commercially made. I have some molds that I really like, but for this order, this is what they liked, so this is what we used. And I'm just sticking it on to the chilled buttercream with that piping gel. Now I am just using edible gold leaf. I just am using, it is the kind that is actually stuck to the transfer paper. So I'm just using this fan brush and removing it from the uh, wax paper transfer sheets with the fan brush and just doing these randomly placed almost veins. It's almost like a marbled vein, but it's actually just with the gold leaf. They just wanted a touch of it. 
and I knew I was gonna place flowers where the two tiers met right there. So I kind of did it at a diagonal. I like the fan brush because it gives you a finer, more detailed um, application of the, the edible gold. You can use a larger brush if you want larger pieces. But this cake was very, very subtle. They didn't want a lot of extra um, gold. They just wanted just a touch of it. And I'm sticking on the ribbon around the base of the board, just using double-sided tape. You can use um, hot glue if you prefer. I just like to use the double-sided tape. That way I can move it if I don't get it exactly where I want it. It's not like a forever situation. <laughs> and here we're at the venue. This is one of my favorite venues. I love that brick wall, that exposed brick. And they supplied the, the uh, fresh floral. And I'm just figuring out where, which ones I'm gonna use as my center. I like to put my larger flower in the center. And I decided to go with this rose. Some of the other flowers were just too large for the size of the cake. And this is how you can actually make your flower um, a little bit fuller, a little bit more open. Just turn it upside down and just spin it. Nice little trick that a floral friend of mine taught me. And then I'm just wrapping the stems with floral tape. Now, this is how I do it. You can do it however you feel safer with. Don't come at me about <laughs> uh, that that's not food safe. It's <laughs> Okay, they're gonna take the flower, flowers out. The floral tape is going to keep them from seeping into the cake. Okay, everybody has their own way of doing it. This is how we do it. And just kind of, I eyeball where I want the pl placement of the flowers to go. That's why I like to start with the middle and fill in around it because then you have your bulk already placed and you can do your finer placement around that. And I love how they had these extra little um, different textures. I think that really made it pop a little bit more and then we did have some greenery that I placed in there too they gave me a wide variety of different flowers to use I didn't use them all because the cake was not large enough to justify using all of them obviously um, but it's nice to have some I'd rather have more than I need than not enough I have gone from table to table trying to find more flowers that I can pick out of an arrangement that they're not going to notice just to fill in and on weddings before. This was nice that I had plenty to pick from. And that was not baby's breath. I know people get upset about baby's breath. That was another small white flower. I don't know what it's called, but I do not believe that that was actually baby's breath. But I had to use what they supplied me, you know. And I did fill in behind because the people at the head table are going to see the back of it. So there it is, guys. I love these colors with the, uh, the wall behind it. I thought it was gorgeous. I wish I could give you a view of the entire uh, venue. But, you know, the cake would be tiny. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. And we will catch you on the next one. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.